Hey folks, Simon here from Velo Performance. Now, I'm back from Gran Canaria. What a great trip that was. And this is what this video is all about. Some of the takeaways and the learnings that Warren and myself learned from the trip itself. And I just thought I'd put things down and talk about bits and pieces that actually I think if you are riding long and you're going to go and do a big volume block of training will really help you get the best from your training and the best recovery. Let's talk a little bit why we were out there. Now, I coach Warren one-to-one -one and he's planning to ride all three stages of the Giro two days before the pros do. And because I'm riding Le Jog this year and I've got my 2024 Tour de France 1926 challenge next year, it just made sense for the pair of us to go out together, ride big miles, and aim for a really big elevation. There are a few things Warren really wanted to learn from me because he's never done this sort of thing, was to learn how to eat the right foods and feel correctly and hydrate so that he knows that he's able to do it day in, day out. And because of my experience of doing back-to-back -back multiple days, it just made sense for him to come with me. And the other thing was to really learn his pacing because when you're doing multiple days back-to-back -back and lots of volume, with hilly terrain, you really need to figure out what your power wattage is, how you're gonna look at your heart rate, and really get to grips with that pacing so you can go day in, day out, and never feel like you're flagging. So that's what this video is all about this week. And if you keep watching, I'm gonna talk about something that I learned with Emma New when I was studying nutrition, about obese populations and why they overeat and how that understanding can help you with your cycling. Riley, so let's just kick off with day-to-day -day nutrition. So how do you make sure you eat enough food to make sure that you're powering your riding when you're riding 100 miles every day and close to 3,000 meters of climbing every day? How do you make sure that you eat enough food day-to-day-to-day -to, -day -to, -day to make sure that you can power that training and also recover? This is where you really need to understand what your calories are and also what your calorie expenditure is from your riding. So to give you an idea of mine, my BMR is roughly around about 2,100 calories and then my expenditure on a bike for let's say 100 miles in Gran Canaria was roughly about 5,500 calories. Now I don't know about you, but that's a lot of calories to stick in. But before we even touch on how to feel this correctly, let's talk about weight loss because I think a lot of people when they go on these big training weeks is they think this is an opportune time to lose weight. And trust me, if you're thinking that way, you're gonna have very bad days in the saddle. I'm not gonna go too deep into this in this video, but with my way of thinking, if you're thinking about weight loss, try and aim and work on that before you go away. That way, when you're doing these big miles, you can eat plenty of calories to be able to fund your recovery and also to be able to ride consistently well each day. If you think about it, if you're trying to ride long and hard every day, but you're driving off a very low calorie deficit, it's just going to be a bad week in the saddle. So let's get into it. Let's talk about how to fuel your training week to make sure that you are riding strong every day. So... We need to start with breakfast. Because you're riding big miles and you need to be making sure you're eating enough calories, then a really cool thing to think about on these trips is eating low volume, high calorie foods. So good things to aim for are things like granola and sort of high energy alpen types of cereals because for the small amount of volume, you can get a lot of carbohydrate and energy in a bowl. Now, the tricky thing in a trip like this is to eat enough protein. So having scrambled eggs on toast next door to your cereal would be a prudent move to make sure that you're starting your day right and making sure you're going to get plenty of protein in your main meals throughout the day. Let's talk about on-bike nutrition because this is something that I think loads of cyclists get wrong. First and foremost, hydration you need to be drinking at least 500 mils per hour, preferably 750 mils per hour. And here's the crucial part, not just water. You need sodium in your water. You need for every liter between 1000 milligrams and 1500 milligrams of sodium per liter of water. Let's talk about eating on the bike and how much calories and carbohydrates would be a good standard practice to aim for. 
Every hour, I think you need between 30 and 60 grams of carbohydrates. Now, you can do this through eating whole foods or having energy mix. Now, this is where it gets a bit tricky because some people like to drink it, some people like to eat it, and some people like to do a mixture of both. And that's why you need to practice it. Personally, I like to eat on the bike, so I always aim for an energy bar every hour. Now, you don't need to spend a lot of money on these things. I go down to the local petrol station and get these flapjacks called Bobby's Flapjacks. They're about 40p, they're 450 calories with about 44 grams of carbohydrate in them. Winner. But here's the thing, sometimes my preference changes, so I like to do half of this and maybe some energy mix. Remember I talked about weight loss populations and obese people and why they overeat? Here's the little tip. We discussed a lot in MNU about how people overeat food. Now, here's a good example. If I said you could eat as many apples as you like, you probably eat one or two and think they're quite delicious. But after the third or fourth one, you'd be like, well, actually, they're getting a bit boring now. And this is the point we were making, is that food and things like crisps are salty and delicious and oily. But if you keep eating those, you get flavour fatigue. You basically, your palate starts to not register them as delicious as they were when they first started. But if you go from crisps to, let's say, cake, and you had the cake and then you had something else. So let's say you went from cake to Maltesers and then you went back to crisps. Because there are changes in flavor consistently over time, you don't get that flavor fatigue. So it means that you start to eat more foods because if you were just to eat crisps, 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 or Maltesers, 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 or cake, 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 you'd get pretty bored of it after a while. So you'd actually stop eating that high volume of food. But when you change those foods around and the different textures of those foods, it makes you overeat more. Mm. So what's that got to do with you, I hear you say? Well, here's the thing. When you're riding big miles, a lot of people tend to sort of buy the same flavoured electrolytes and say, well, you know, I only need to take those with me. But here's why you need to think slightly differently. As I talked about, if you drink and eat the same thing over and over again, you get flavor fatigue. So you stop eating it because you don't like it. It just gets really boring. So when you go out on these big rides and these big weeks, make sure that you take lots of different flavors of electrolytes with you so you can swap and change them throughout the days and weeks because that way you'll make sure that you drink and eat the food that you're required to eat and never get that boredom sensation that you get that let's say if you turned up with black currant all, all week you get to day two and go oh, i'm sick of black currant we've all done it let's talk coffee stops this is my favorite coffee mug by the way um when you're riding big miles, you're gonna wanna stop a couple of times and get a coffee and also maybe to eat something a bit more substantial. And this is a perfect time to have something that's a bit more savory. So something like a sandwich with cheese and ham in it. Let's talk about post-ride recovery shakes. Do you really need them? Yes. If you're riding big miles and big hills every day for five or six days, it's a really important time to think about trying to get quality protein in and some carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. Running off MNU recommendations, having a whey protein shake alongside carbohydrates, about 0 0.8 grams per kg of body weight, pretty soon after you've come back from training, will help replenish glycogen levels, help start putting quality protein back into the system to help aid recovery. And also, if you think about it, if you have it in one of these, there's quite a lot of fluid in there, it's gonna help with your hydration status as well. Mm. Let's talk about dinner. This is where I think a lot of people mess up. They tend to either overeat or undereat or eat the wrong kind of foods. And what you wanna do is choose the right foods that are gonna support your recovery and give you plenty of energy to ride your bike strong and consistently the next day. Mm. So what should your evening meal look like? The cool thing about being out in Spain is they have paella pretty much most evenings, which is delicious, plenty of carbohydrates, lots of protein from the seafood, 
And also you could choose lots of different salads to go along with it. So lots of vitamins, minerals, prebiotic fibers, probiotic fibers to maintain health. Mm. Pudding was always on the menu and always after pudding, I'd have fruit because I wanna make sure I'm eating plenty of antioxidant foods, rich in vitamins and minerals to keep my immune function strong, but also I wanna stay healthy. The key thing I'm trying to get across here is what you eat is really important to make sure that you can put out really consistent training every day, especially when you're doing these big training blocks. If you eat well, you're gonna recover well. If you recover well, you're gonna be able to consistently do this day in, day out, day in, day out. It's so, so important to make sure that you're eating correctly for the work required. Mm. Riley, let's talk about pacing because this is gonna be one thing that's gonna help everybody when they're riding big miles back to back. This is something I learned when I was doing an event for charity and I was riding 100 miles every day for 10 days. You can't ride those sort of events like you would do at home. Yeah, I can ride pretty strong in aerobic capacity, but what I learned was if I backed off my aerobic capacity by 10 watts and dropped my heart rate by about five or 10 beats, it allowed me to ride within myself every day, back to back to back. What that required me to do was to ditch my ego. So if other people came past me, I ignored what they were doing. Yes, I know I can catch them up, but if I started smashing out the watts to catch these people up, I know I'm for overly fatiguing myself, which is crazy. So what I'm saying there is, think about pacing yourself a little slower than you would do normally. And also think about your pedal stroke when you're riding big hills, because you don't want to be out of the saddle riding big gears, grinding up hills, because you're basically burning muscle matches. So you want to try and be as efficient as you can, keeping the heart rate and the watts as close to where you know that you can consistently put out over time. Trust me, if you think about this, it's going to see you right when you're riding big miles every day back to back. Riley, that's it for this week. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Do me a favour. If you have, hit like. If you've got any questions, stick them in the comments box below. And hey, look, do you know what? If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're a regular to the channel, welcome back. And look, I'll be back again in a couple of weeks. Cheers.